So you've been focused on growing your email list over the last little while, right? First of all, let me just say, I am so dang proud of you. But my next question is, what are you actually doing with that bucket of emails that you have now gathered? Hey you, it's Lisa Ann coming to you with another episode of the More Than Social podcast. This one is going to be super actionable. We're going to talk about all things email lists. Now, I know, I know I talk a lot about email marketing on here and I don't have to remind you why it's so important and why I talk about it all the time. But now I feel like you're at this spot where you're ready to take it up a notch. You're ready to really leverage email marketing for your business. And I know I always throw a lot at you, but today I feel like you're ready for that little bit more push, right? So we've spent a lot of time talking about growing your email list. And now I want to talk about using that list so that you're actually using it to your advantage. If you haven't listened to the last few episodes all about email marketing, I want you to go back to episode 103 and 105. Just write it down and promise me you'll go back and listen. There are a lot more tips in those episodes that you can combine with what I'm talking to you about today. And if you haven't got your hand on my entire email marketing guide, make sure that you go to the notes section right below this episode and download it. Now I break down everything, and I mean literally everything that you need to use to really grow grow your email marketing and to start using an email list to generate more leads and sales. It's basically taking all my email marketing knowledge over the last eight and a half years and combining it into this one jam packed PDF for you. But like I said, today, I really want to take it up a notch. I want to take you a little bit further and I want to make sure that you're making the most out of those emails that you have been collecting. I know you've been working so hard to do so. So let me just answer that question that has been sitting in the back of your mind. What do I do with all these people that are now inside of my email list? Actually, to make this very, very easy and actionable for you, I'm going to break down exactly what I'm doing right now within my business with all of my email list subscribers. And there's really three main strategies that I want to walk you through, which I'm going to go really in depth with. But before I do that, let me just remind you that growing an email list is one of the biggest assets that you will ever have within your business. But the goal isn't just to have this bucket of people just sitting there for whenever it is that you want to use it. It's really about getting people into this bubble and building this connection and then turning them from a subscriber into an actual paying client. It's kind of like your social media following, right? People are so caught up in growing their followers that they actually forget that followers don't necessarily mean sales. So today, regardless if you have 10 people on your list, 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000, I really don't care that number. What I do care about is how well you are leveraging your email marketing platforms. So you ready to dive into it? Okay. First of all, I want you to picture this. You've posted on social media about this freebie that you just put together. So a guide, a checklist, a training, whatever it is for you. And someone says, Hey Lisa, yeah, I want access to that. So you're going to ask, okay, so what's your email? I'm going to send it over to you. So then you send them that freebie, right? Now you're going to keep your fingers crossed that maybe they will read it. And then maybe they're going to send you a message saying, Hey, I love what you did here. I want to work with you. Sorry to be the Debbie Downer today, but it really doesn't work like that. It could, yes, but typically it's not gonna. People are busy. People love free things, so they're gonna say yes to it all the time. People want something that they will take whatever it is or whoever it is, as soon as they want it, they're gonna just take whoever's in front of them. You get what I'm trying to say there. So instead, what I want you to do, it's really about you making sure that you are constantly in front of these people building relationships. You're not spamming them. You're not harassing them whatsoever, but you are there to help. You want to build a relationship and you want to show up as that solution to their needs. That way, when they are ready to move forward with and they just kind of pick that person that's right in front of them, they choose you because you're top of mind. That is the goal here. How can you leverage your email marketing to stay top of mind? So how do you actually do that with your emails? So this is strategy number one that I want you to write down if you're taking notes here. Use something that I like to call an email welcome sequence. This is where an email automation actually comes into play. So in simple terms for you, 
Email automation is where you can automatically send out emails to that new prospect without having to lift a finger. So instead of setting up for the first time, of course, yes, you have some work to do there, but it's something that will just run for you in autopilot. So let's just go back to that example for a sec, okay? So you've got their email and now you want them to have access to that freebie. So instead of you manually sending it to them, typing out this email saying, hey, here it is, or having even your team member do it, Instead, you're going to put them through this automation. Now, this automation isn't just sending one email. It's not just sending that freebie to them. As a reminder, the goal is to build a bucket of emails, but then you want to build a relationship with these people and walk them literally step by step by step to becoming a client. Again, I call this a welcome sequence. Typically in my personal welcome sequences and anything I teach within the spotlight theory, there's anywhere from seven to 10 emails. And I even have text messages going out as well, but to keep it really simple for you, that way you can really implement this right away. Let's break it down into five specific emails that I want you to make sure that you're sending out. The first one is the warm welcome email. So this is essentially where you are expressing gratitude for them requesting access to that freebie. You're going to start to set the stage for what's actually going to come and give them a taste of what makes you and your content valuable. And obviously you wanna deliver that freebie. Email number two, this is where you're doing story time. As the relationship grows, you start to tell your brand story, share your journey, introduce yourself, give them key stuff and let them know what makes your business tick. It's kind of like unfolding a story one chapter at a time. Next, we're gonna sprinkle in some value. These are the emails that go beyond just selling stuff. That's not what I want you doing here. I want you to be giving out helpful tips, exclusive content, behind the scenes glimpses into your business. The goal is to show that your emails, they're more than sales pitches, that they actually are going to be adding value to their lives and ones that they want to open. Email number four is all about building excitement. So I want you to tease them. What is coming up within your business? Is it new products, events, exclusive opportunities? Make them look forward to your email. It's kind of like they're turning these pages of this really good book. And lastly, you want to wrap it up with a call to action finale. This is where you're literally guiding them to take action within your business. So make a purchase, sign up for an event, engage with your content, whatever it is that you want them to do next. It's that grand finale that essentially is turning interest into action. Now, always remember this. The key to a great email automation setup is personalization. You want to customize your emails based on what your audience likes and how they actually engage. So they should be really tailored made for them in your specific dream client. And remember, these five emails will send an autopilot for you when you set up the full automation. So again, as soon as someone says, yes, give me that freebie, these five emails will automatically be sent to them based on a time frame and structure that you set up within this automation. So two days here, three days here, all of that fun stuff. Now this takes me to the next step. Let's keep with our example just to keep this really easy. Let's say this person receives your emails over two weeks. Now what's gonna happen? So at this point, they're not getting any more from you, right? That automation is done. And let's say that they didn't actually make the purchase or they didn't move forward with your offer in whatever capacity. Now, again, you have this bucket full of emails just kind of sitting there. This is where I send out top of mind emails. So this would be strategy number two if you are taking notes right now. To stay top of mind, you have to constantly be sending out emails, just like you do with your social media. You are so consistent, right? You're constantly posting in front of them to stay top of mind. Marketing is the same across all platforms. It really doesn't matter. Consistency is key. You hear it all the time. So I personally send out emails on a weekly basis to my entire database, so every single email I have. Some of our clients will send out bi-weekly emails, even monthly, de depending on you. But the entire purpose is that you're staying top of mind. That way you constantly are building trust with your audience. You also want to position yourself as this authority and email marketing is a really great way to do that, especially if you're using these top of mind emails as a way to deliver true value. You want to be seen as that go-to source for information within your industry. When you do that, they're more likely to turn to you when they need your products or servers or essentially when they're ready to move forward. It's kind of like becoming this trusted advisor in your field. And like I said, the ultimate goal is that you want to stay relevant in their minds.
It's unavoidable for all of us. We get busy. Life gets busy. So what's actually keeping us all connected? It's that consistency. That's what. So to be honest with you, with emails, people are so stuck on newsletters. Those are boring old marketing tactics. Sending these emails is not just filling people's inboxes. You want to nurture relationships, build trust, solidify your position as this go-to expert. That's the key. Show up as value. Now, before I get to the next strategy, let me just give you some really quick tips from emails that you're going to be sending. First up, I kind of already talked about this, but being consistent is really key. Remember that with any marketing that you do, consistency is going to be key. But with emails, imagine that this is kind of like meeting up with a friend every single week for coffee just to catch up. You're looking forward to those catch ups, right? That's the vibe that you want to create with your emails. When you are consistent with sending out your emails weekly, you're constantly showing up, you're constantly making yourself more familiar, constantly building that relationship. Tip number two, though, quality over quantity. So even if you are committing to sending weekly emails, just like I do, don't sacrifice the quality of your work. Commit to bringing in real value to your audience and showing up real too, by the way. Next one, really, really listen to this one. Okay, you listening? All right. Make sure you're focused on building relationships, not selling. These emails are the building blocks of a strong relationship with your email list. So share tips, stories, even industry updates. But remember, it's going back to hanging out with friends. So just show up and hang out as you would naturally. And the last one for you, just don't be annoying. Don't bombard your audience inbox. Don't just send them emails for the sake of bombarding them. Send high value things. I've been on lists before where I would get emails every single day. Sometimes I would actually hear people sending up multiple emails a day. (sighs) Didn't work for me. So learn who your audience is. Keep your engagement as natural as possible. Be yourself. Just don't be over the top annoying. Just aim to build quality connections. That's what I want you to do. So it's pretty straightforward when I break it down this way, right? Okay, so now let's move on to the last and final strategy for the entire day. And that's automating your follow-up. So let's say that you've gotten a person to open up all five of those welcome emails. Now you send out one weekly email, letting them know about some project that you're working on. And then all of a sudden they reach out to you and they ask to book an appointment with you. So whether that's through your booking calendar or you manually doing great at this point, it's working. But now you have that call with the person and they're not actually ready to move forward with you right that second. So typically, what are you going to do from a business owner perspective? What do you do? You're going to send a follow up email once, maybe twice. And then let's just say that you get busy and now this person falls through the crack and all of a sudden six months down the road, you're like, oh, I forgot to follow up with them. Another automation that you can set up is an entire follow-up sequence that will constantly keep you top of mind and engage with this prospect. They are so close to moving forward. And sometimes they just need a few nudges or maybe they just need a little bit of time before they actually commit to it. So in setting up these automations, there are really specific tips I want you to remember. And actually, there are six of them that I want you to write down if you're taking notes right now. Tip number one, again, always personalize it. But in this case, with email automation, you can automatically put people's names into the emails. So it would say, hey, Lisa, instead of just hey. You can even include a business name automatically if you wanted to. Regardless, the more that you can personalize it and make it seem like you're manually emailing that person, the better results you're going to get. No one has to know that it's automated except for you and me, of course. Tip number two, I want you to give out something valuable. Yes, even after you've already pitched them. Each email should offer something valuable to that reader. So whether it is more exclusive content, additional tips or insights, or even a special offer, your goal is to just continuously deliver value that aligns with the interests and needs. Show up as that solution again. Tip number three, segment your audience. So this one is going to be really key if you have multiple offers within your business. So what I mean by segmenting your audience simply means I want you to categorize your audience based on either their behavior, needs, or preference. So this allows you to send out more targeted and relevant follow-up emails. For example, let's just say that I had a prospect call with someone who was interested in my Spotlight Theory 12-week program versus my done-for-you agency. I would have different conversations with both of these people, right? 
you can get very, very specific here. So my follow-up would be all about talking about the spotlight theory versus the agency. Another one, tip four, be conscious about your timing. Timing and frequency of your follow-up emails is really important. Now, like I said before, with the top of mind emails, you want to avoid bombarding people with too many messages. So when you're following up with someone, think about how you would manually follow up with a prospect if you didn't forget to send them a message. I want you to start with that framework and then adjust it based on what the stats are telling you. Now, speaking of stats, don't actually be afraid to really analyze your results. That's why I I literally love digital marketing. It tells you what's working and what's not working. That's tip number five. You want to continuously test different elements of your emails and look at the stats. So test subject lines, the actual content, the visuals. Try adding a picture, a video, have short email, a long email, see how it converts. That goes with all of your emails, by the way, not just your follow-up. Any email you send, you should always be testing. I personally have an entire document that I use to track all of my emails so I know exactly what is working and what's not. My last tip, so number six, be very, very clear with your call to action. What is it that you want your audience to do? And you need to communicate what you want them to do next, or it may sound funny, they're not going to do anything. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. And if you tell us to do too many things, we won't actually do anything. So for example, one of my clients sent out an email to her list and she told me to do four different things. I'm doing nothing. So be very, very clear on the one thing you want us to do, whether that's making a purchase, downloading a resource, sharing feedback, booking a call, whatever it is. And by the way, don't get too creative. Tell me exactly what you want me to do, just like you would tell me if I was a five-year-old click here, do this, do that. This is your key to conversions. And honestly, email marketing is, it's so important when it comes to converting people into sales. You already are focused on growing your database. So let's make sure that you are using it wisely. Now, I know I threw a lot at you today. There was three different strategies and a lot of tips out there. And I know it's not all going to sink in right this second. So I want you to come back and listen to this one a few times. Although knowledge is power, the true battle, really, it begins when we start to apply it. So this is where you can truly transform the game for your email marketing strategy and see some huge success within your business. So I challenge you to implement all three of these strategies and see what it does for your brand, see what it does for your business. And if you need help writing any of these emails, I would love to share a special offer with you today for being a part of the More Than Social podcast community. I don't do this often, but I felt the urge to today. Have you heard all of the hype about the inbox impact templates? So these are all of my email marketing templates. What I did is I put them together for the members of the spotlight theory to really help them skyrocket their emails and also just get things done quickly. I would love to be able to give them to you too. Plus for being a part of the community, you can actually get these templates for 50% off just as a way for me to say thank you for hanging out with me. So if you're ready to save time, connect with your audience and really skyrocket your business with the power of email marketing, head on over to the show notes right below this episode. I put the link in there for you for 50% off. That way you can grab access to the inbox impact templates. Now, everything I have within these templates, just so you know, this is exactly what I use within my business. And I've seen how they change things for me. And I see how they change things for my clients, the members of the spotlight theory. So I want to pass that power on to you now. Now, don't just let this be another episode that you just listen to. You have the power, you have the knowledge, the skills, the strategies to really level up. And I'm so dang excited to see how it works for you. Now, if you have any questions about any of it, by the way, I'm always here. Connect with me on social media and don't forget to rate and review and subscribe so you never miss an episode where we can really work together to take your business up a notch. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoy your week. I will see you next week with another episode and some more tips to implement into your business. Bye for now.